Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, Cystic Fibrosis and Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the CF Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. To learn more about CF clinical research, CF lung disease and lung health, nutrition, germs, infection control, healthcare coverage, and more, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. Edith Zamanik, who is the Assistant Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Colorado and a physician at the Children's Hospital Colorado Denver in the CF Care Center. Welcome, Edith. So the first question is, what is MRSA? So Staphylococcus aureus is a bacteria that's very common. It's often found on the skin or in the environment. Um, and there are two types that we talk about. One is methicillin-sensitive staph mm -hmm. aureus, and the other is methicillin-resistant staph aureus, and, or MRSA. And MRSA just means that the staph aureus bacteria has become resistant to some of the common antibiotics that we use. So how common is MRSA in people with cystic fibrosis? MRSA is fairly common in people with cystic fibrosis. It's present in more than 20% of patients. Mm -hmm. You can see this is a graph from the cystic fibrosis registry data that uh, reports all the MRSA infections um, in 2010 in people with CF. And you can see that people with CF uh, had a it was most common in those age six to 24, but at all age ranges, people had MRSA, young and old. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, it's been increasing. So this slide shows how common it is from 1995 to 2005, and you can see that MRSA is increasing, and it's continued to increase after 2005. So how do people with CF get MRSA lung infections? People with cystic fibrosis can get MRSA in several ways. One is through direct contact with somebody else that has MRSA infection. The second is through indirect contact, so with objects that might have MRSA on it, so in the household, at the gym, on exercise equipment, mm -hmm. you can get it, um, or through respiratory secretion. So somebody else with cystic fibrosis who might have MRSA, if they cough or sneeze, you can get it that way. So um, basically, whatever you would do to prevent or avoid MR getting MRSA, or getting any germ, is what you would do to prevent or avoid getting MR MRSA. Correct, correct. So that's good to know. So we've talked about the spread and, and how it goes and, and what it is, but how does it affect people with cystic fibrosis? So that's a really good question, and it's a little bit hard to answer. We're still figuring that out. Mm -hmm. But there are people with cystic fibrosis that have MRSA infection who probably do have some lung damage and have some decline in lung function because of the MRSA infection. Um, there are other people who may have MRSA and it may be more of a colonizer or a bacteria that's there that's not necessarily causing a problem. Um, but we don't, we don't know for sure. So it sounds like it could be like Pseudomonas that colonizes and just sits there but doesn't cause infection. But Sometimes it does. Correct. Oh, well, that's good to know. So um, MRSA may or may not cause an infection, a lung infection in people with cystic fibrosis, but it would cause an infection in a cut. That's correct. It can cause an infection in, in a cut, although you, people can also have it on their skin and just be colonized with it and not have an infection from it in that way, too. Uh -huh. So it can be a colonizer in both in both areas. So well, this sounds like a very interesting organism. Um, so. Let me ask this because a lot of people want to know, does, and if it does, how does MRSA affect the health of people with cystic fibrosis? So um, again, this is something that people are studying now. There was uh, a study recently that found that having MRSA, especially people who had MRSA on multiple cultures mm -hmm. over more than two years, had a, had some impact on survival. Mm -hmm. However, there are more studies that are ongoing to really understand this. So how, how does a person with CF find out they have MRSA in their lungs? So MRSA is detected through the typical respiratory cultures. So when you go to your CF doctor in the clinic, uh, almost always you'll have a culture done, either a throat culture or if you can cough up phlegm, we'll do a sputum culture, or if you have a bronchoscopy, we'll do a culture from that. And that is um, tested for MRSA. Um, and then how is it treated? If somebody has MRSA, it's causing problems, how is it treated? So despite the name that it's resistant to antibiotics, mm -hmm. there are some antibiotics that are available to treat it, both oral antibiotics and some IV antibiotics. 
there are a couple of different approaches. Sometimes doctors might recommend that you try something called eradication, which means to try to get rid of the bacteria that's there. Mm -hmm. And there are particular regimens of antibiotics that you might do to try and eradicate the bacteria. However, we don't really know if these work that well or if they improve lung function. Mm -hmm. Um, other times, doctors might recommend that you wait and see and see if it seems to be causing a problem. So are you having more cough and more respiratory symptoms? Is your lung function going down um, and you can't figure out another reason that it might be going down? Then maybe you'll treat the MRSA with antibiotics. Um, there's a couple different treatment regimens. Mm -hmm. So again, there are antibiotics, oral antibiotics, or you might be in the hospital on IV antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some treatments, uh, especially if you're trying to eradicate, where you might use like a nasal gel, where it's something that you put just on the right at the outside mm -hmm. of the nose to try to reduce the MRSA, cleaning around the house with special wipes, and then doing some baths or showers with a special wash that help to get rid of it. So we mentioned it briefly before, but I. I'm looking for some detail now. How uh, can a person avoid getting or spreading MRSA? So the best things are really, again, what you do for to avoid any infection mm -hmm. or any viral infection or other bacteria. You wanna wash your hands very frequently, so before and after you eat. Um, you wanna wash your hands after you cough and cough into a tissue or into your elbow and then wash your hands. Um, you can use those hand gels. Mm -hmm. um, those are good to have around the house. Um, not sharing personal items, so you don't want to share cups, razors, um, think toothbrushes, things like that. Um, if you have a cut on your skin, you want to cover it up with mm -hmm. a bandage. Cleaning equipment at the gym, um, a lot of gyms now will have those wipes, you can wipe down equipment. And then cleaning all your respiratory equipment and disinfecting your nebulizers and other um, respiratory equipment. So um, that that's good to know. Uh, but. If I've got a lung infection with MRSA and I've got a cut, can I infect my cut from what's in my lungs? You could, so you do want to keep cuts covered. Mm -hmm. And if you have a cut that then seems like it's getting infected, it's getting more red or swollen or there's pus, you want to talk to your doctor. And it's also helpful to tell your doctor that if you know that you have MRSA to tell them that because okay. it might change what antibiotic they prescribe. So I want to change a little bit. People with MRSA who go into the hospital they are treated a little bit different in the hospital. Could you talk a, a, about that and what that is? Yeah, that's correct. And um, every hospital is gonna have a little different policy, so every place is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but um, hospitals are very concerned about MRSA because it can be passed from patient to patient and it be, can be passed um, if a nurse is taking care of a patient and then is taking care of another patient, it can be passed that way. Mm -hmm. um, or through doctors, and so uh, when you, if you have MRSA and, and are in the hospital, likely you'll be on isolation, and that means that people that come into your room will wear a gown and they'll wear gloves, um, and they'll typically wear a mask um, mm -hmm. when they're within three feet of you at least. Um, and then you'll probably be, there'll be some restrictions about where you can go in the hospital. Is there anything different when, if somebody's got MRSA in the hospital, any kind of different treatment when they go into clinic maybe? Um, it depends on the clinic, but mm -hmm. in general, uh, you want to get into the clinic room fairly quickly so mm -hmm. that you're not um, just in the waiting room um, with the potential to spread to other people. Um, and then again, people will typically wear gowns and gloves, and if you're coughing, they'll usually wear a mask to prevent spread. So pretend I'm one of your patients or one of your patient's mothers, mm -hmm. um, and uh, my child has MRSA. What are you gonna tell me about MRSA and recommended treatments? Um, so what I would tell you is that MRSA is very common um, and many um, children with and without CF um, can have MRSA. Um, and that we don't really know yet what impact it has on lung, on lung disease and lung function. Mm -hmm. um, I, generally, I will talk to families about the options where there is an option to try to eradicate or to get rid of it. And that usually involves a course of maybe a couple of antibiotics and then mm -hmm. doing some of the house cleaning um, and the baths. Um, and families may elect to try to do that or as particularly in patients who are otherwise doing well, their lung function is good, they're not having a lot of symptoms, we really may just opt to wait and see um, and just watch and then if problems arise, then address them as they come up. So, um, well, that's good. I'm very comforted as the mother of a child with CF now that yeah. you've told me that. But um, the last question I wanna ask is, what's the latest research related to MRSA in people with cystic fibrosis? Um, so there's several things. This is um, definitely a big area of research. People really want to understand um, the impact of MRSA. And, and that's the first thing is, is to really understand 
how much damage is this causing and how um, important of a mm -hmm. pathogen is this in CF? Um, and then the second thing is what's the best thing to do? Because I would like to have a good answer um, when people ask me what, what should the treatment be for mm -hmm. MRSA? Um, and so there is a multi-center trial that's getting started right now that's looking at whether it's better to try to eradicate early. So when you first identify MRSA, should you just try to get mm -hmm. rid of it? Um, and can you get rid of it with these treatments? Um, or is it better to wait and just see if people have symptoms um, and, and which approach is better? Um, and then the really um, one of the other areas is that people are looking at are there different types of MRSA mm -hmm. because it's possible bacteria have something called um, virulence factors which basically can change how much damage they cause in the body. So it's possible that there's some types of MRSA that are more damaging than mm -hmm. others and people are trying to identify that because that could help to guide treatment too if you knew that there was a type that was less damaging you might be less inclined to treat that versus one that's more damaging. Um, and then the, the third thing is looking at how it's spread. Mm -hmm. So looking at are there particular types that are spread more mm -hmm. easily um, that we should worry more about. Well, it's reassuring to know that there's research going on to try and answer these unknown questions that are out there related to MRSA. Yeah, it's so, definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much. You can learn more about what research is going on related to MRSA in people with cystic fibrosis on the CF Foundation's website. Under quick links, click on Find a Clinical Trial then click on Advanced Search, and then type in the keyword MRSA, and the studies going on will pop up and you can learn more from there. Additionally, there's some frequently asked questions on the Foundation's website under Living with Cystic Fibrosis, Staying Healthy. At the bottom of this page is a link to the webcast about infection control and germs, where you can learn how you can avoid and or prevent the spread of germs between people. Also, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has excellent information on their website about MRSA in general, and their site is cdc.gov. Just type in MRSA. So I would like to thank you for watching this webcast about MRSA in people with cystic fibrosis. Edith, for helping to answer some of those questions that are out there. Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Melissa Muller, Genentech, and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.